I got my beer, I got my camera, and I'm ready to make a video on camera light seals. But first, wait a minute. You know, I watched a lot of videos since I made my video on detailing and evaluating uh, classic cameras. And I said I was going to make a video on light seals, and that was like <laughs> two, three years ago. I just haven't had time to make one until now. But from the time I made that first that that detailing video to when I'm making this one right now, I've I've done light seals and detailing on about at least two dozen cameras, and most of those cameras I've shot a film with, and the pictures turned out perfect. So I know that the, the light seal repairs worked. So I've gotten pretty good at doing it. Um, I, I picked up a lot of cameras through the years, mostly through thr uh, thrift stores, and I've accumulated a few here, and I'm going to show you these. Um, as far as materials and things, I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing, and then I'll like show like after or whatever. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but uh, I'll, let, I'll say I'll recommend because I'm, I assume you have a longer attention span than uh, most YouTubers. Uh, you can always save this video to your favorites or whatever or watch later for things you want to uh, refer back to or whatever. But I had, like I said, I have a variety of cameras here that I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to be working on them like one at a time. So this video from from beginning to end is a lot of time is going to transpire. Um, but uh, if something unique to a camera or whatever, if it's worth mentioning, I'll, I'll make a little scene on that specific camera. So without further ado, I'm going to show you my little uh, cast of camera characters here. Ones we're going to be working on. In fact, here's one of them here. It's a, a, a Yashica MG1. And one thing I will say, um, usually, sometimes if you pick up a camera, an older camera, you you can tell. Sometimes you can tell that it had light light seals that had deteriorated. Sometimes so many older cameras. Um, they were designed in a way so that so that the back cover, like especially ones that had, would have like a slide off cover, like the old Leicas and things and Zeiss contacts, they they might have had like a felt light seal, which is a pretty much a permanent thing. You don't have to worry about it. You may not even notice it. Some other cameras they were designed in such a way that so that the the, the valleys between the doors and the body were were designed so that they never needed any kind of a um, like a felt material or a what is going to be in most of these cameras I'm working on is a kind of like a a foam plastic or foam rubber kind of material. Um, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But like I said, I'm going to show you some of these the cameras I'm going to be working on in this video without any further ado here. Okay, here's my my improvised work table. I have most of my supplies here that I'm going to use. The materials and my cleaning materials, whatever. Oh, well, actually, the, like any cleaning fluids, I'm going to keep separate. I don't want like to to spill anything. I'm obviously not going to have all these cameras on here while I'm working on any one single camera. But I'm just going to give you a quick little tour of of the before conditions of these. This Pentax KX, um, I would say, and on SLRs, I don't know if you can see it too well. I'm going to move this light here. Maybe you can see it. Sometimes, a lot of times I wouldn't mess with it if it doesn't look too bad, but like this foam, what they call the mirror bumper, like this one is pretty much half gone. I'm going to have to replace that. I'm going to care, I'm, which is... Why I say don't mess with this because you got to be super careful when you're when you're like take cleaning this because you don't want stuff to fall inside on the mirror or whatever or on the ground ground glass. But uh, 
Maybe you can see in here. Now this one has like a uh, a piece of like a felt, but it's kind of like flattened. So I I may or may not replace that. I I'll show you my materials later. But I have what they call this pressed to felt material, which is like some a felt with a with a uh, peel off adhesive back. But uh, otherwise, in this one, this. Uh, Pentax is, I think they use like a felt felt material in the channels and it usually lasts much much longer or in many cases you may not even have to replace it. Same thing with like older Nikons. Uh, Nikons from the 70s and the 60s um, you, you probably won't have to replace those because they never deteriorate unlike like the plastic foam stuff which does. But uh, I think with this one I think I'm pretty much going to leave this one. I'm just going to replace the mirror bumper on this one. And there's maybe just a little bit of, of residue here that might have stuck to the door. But that's usually a, a good determining uh, um, factor if to decide if you have to replace like the channel material. If, if a lot of that has like crumbled off and stuck to the door, then yeah, then you'll have to replace that. So that's that's this one. That's this KX. Uh, pretty much the same thing with this one. Uh, this one, yeah, also has like kind of like some felt material. Um, has some felt material here too. So I may or may not replace replace this. I'm not sure. It looks kind of pretty much dried out, so it wouldn't be too hard to replace. Now I gotta say that Canons, almost always Canon cameras, you you'll from the 80s, like an AE1, classic AE1 here, you'll have to replace the channel material. You can see, maybe you can see the how it's some of it's stuck to the door here. And this has like a sponge, that sponge material that I'll probably replace that with like some felt, or maybe some. Uh, I have some other kind of like. Uh, what I use is going to be like window insulating material for that, maybe. So that's an AE1. These Yashikas, they almost always have to have these channels replaced. I mean, a rangefinder is much easier because you don't have to deal with like a mirror bumper, like on an SLR perhaps, but, but uh, same thing here. It's got to look like a pad there. This is one I showed in a recent video about that battery hack. This is this Minolta uh, FP. But you can see how much material is in there. This has some kind of, yeah, some kind of sponge stuff here. I can actually see that most of this is like worn off. So I'll probably redo everything on this one. Uh, this Minolta. I wouldn't mess with the mirror bumper with this. It looks halfway decent. It's kind of like st stuck way far behind this little, you know, cover here. But uh, doesn't look too bad. This is all this foam. Eh, it looks pretty good, except for except for here. These will have to be done, and then. Maybe that's it for this one. Uh, this, this Vivitar. This bumper I'll replace is pretty much worn down to nothing. And same thing with these channels. These channels are pretty bad too. Now I'm going to go into these, well, this one. So this one is different, unique because it's more of a plastic, so I'm going to have to be more careful with what, what kind of chemical I use to remove. And I'm going to have to do a lot of, of cleaning of this one. It's really horrible. <laughs> this is going to have to all come off of here, all this stuff. Channels also. 
Same thing with this Olympus. You can see how bad that is there. And that. Now, another thing too, when you look at something like this and it might look decent, but you a good test to see if it should be replaced, I would say. If you if you push down like on your finger or something and it doesn't like it just kind of mushes down, doesn't come back, it's pretty much like the de deteriorated so so I'm gonna replace all that on this one there's another one that is notorious for that are these cannon cannonettes and these this is gonna be one of the more challenging ones because it's like I actually have a kit and you can buy for most cameras you can buy like pre kit kits of pre-cut pieces that you can like put in the channels but you can see how badly all this has got to be pretty much replaced. See how it sticks to stuck to there, everything like that. And this is a challenge too because you don't want to get that junk, you know, inside this whole um, take up system here. And like I said, here's the there's last the one I showed you the the Ashika. It's pretty much like the same issue as as the Electro there. It's the same basic kind of camera there. Okay, so I've cleared my little work table off of those cameras and I'm going to kind of show you the the tools and supplies I'm going to use. You don't really need a whole lot of different things, but I think there's a couple things here that, that really super work well that you can get at like a drugstore or whatever or wherever they sell like, you know, dental, wherever you find the toothbrush or whatever you can find stuff. Uh, but I would recommend you're going to use a lot of paper towels because when you scrape a lot of the sold gunk out of these cameras, you want to like wipe your tool off on on a piece of paper towel, and uh, before you you know go back into the camera and keep keep, which hopefully will not be like too hard to do. Um, you get got to get that residue out of there. Sometimes you can scrape it out with the tool. I'll show you. Um, you got like rags, whatever. Um, tweezers there, maybe that that's kind of like a de automotive detailing tool, whatever, you can like brush some stuff out of there if it's dry. Um, you got like canned air there, although I would say be careful how you use that because you don't want to like blow stuff on onto like mirrors and things to damage them. I got like two kind of like bowls here, one is a st stainless steel pet bowl for like any kind of strong solvents and I'll talk more about like cleaning fluids and solvents and then I have another one here that I would only use for something like uh, uh, white vinegar which is kind of a nice mild uh, cleaner for detailing too. You're going to use a lot of these cotton swabs um, and I would keep them I had like a lot of loose ones that I kind of threw out because they got like all contaminated but I it's kind of nice to keep them in here so that they're like super super clean and they don't get all um, like I don't know what you're going to say all like all the fibers get all loose in that and they get get in your your camera you don't want that so I keep have your dispenser keep them in there until you're actually ready to use a typical single swab there um, this is going to be some of the materials I'm going to be using. Like I said, I got I got stuff cut up here from other from other installations. This is that's that felt material I talked about. It has an adhesive back. This is like some stuff you can get at any hardware store. It's like window window insulation. It's about I think it's maybe like three thirty seconds of an inch thick or whatever. It's it's a it's a it's a pretty good. Uh, thickness for a lot of applications although I gotta say I won't know exactly if I'll be able to use it in every application that I that I may want because it's like if you put it in like an edge of, of, a, of a door when you close the door you don't want like excess uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of excess 
resistance on that hinge. That way this might be like too thick or whatever. So you might have, I might have to, I could use this or I could use like the felt material for something like that. Now this is, this is something that I got, I figured I got this from another, someone else on the internet and I'm going to take credit. I'm not going to give, take credit for this but, uh, on some other web websites about light seals. Um, this was recommended. This is like number three gauge uh, cotton, cotton yarn or wool. And if you do this, you can use this for most of the of the door channels, the narrow channels. And what what is nice is it's it's pretty much permanent, and it's easier to to put in than say, in a lot of cases these like these really narrow in a kit like this where it has like the really small, thin uh, pieces for the channel. And through it, I've done several cameras. Just this is the one. I'm actually going to use this one for for the uh, Canonette. But I've done another Canonette, and I've done like several Canons from these kits that you can get. And I'll I'll, I'll kind of give them a plug. It's a place called U.S. Camera sells these things, and they go anywhere from like ten to fifteen dollars. I'd say sixteen dollars maybe at the most. But uh, if you use these. You got to make sure that those, especially those those channels, are like super clean because uh, and then you, because these things are really like hard to put in correctly. They like to like they like to like go in sideways. That once you peel off the the, the adhesive back, they're like you got It's like, it's kind of a challenge to get those to stick into the actual bottom of the valleys of those channels they like to stick to the side or whatever so but I, I am going to use this one because I've had this one for a while so but other than that it's like this number three uh, yarn and make sure it's either cotton or wool not no uh, acrylic or whatever because if you whatever kind of cement or whatever that you're going to use to stick these in you don't want it to like dissolve or react with the synthetic or whatever but this is like a number three gauge uh, cotton yarn. Uh, so, you know, and here's the tools. Okay, now here's the tools. This is like a, this is not some professional tool, but it's kind of like a dental pick that you can get find. And it's not, you can pretty much, I think any drugstore kind of sells these things if you, wherever, you know, toothbrushes are or whatever. This is a fantastic little tool for digging out the residue or whatever and if you're lucky you can sometimes you can like go into a channel and you can like pick up the backing of of, of a uh, of that foam the narrow foam channel and you can kind of peel it out if you're lucky you can peel it out it's it's much quicker and cleaner uh, and you, okay here's a uh, typical exacto knife razor knife for cutting your um, for cutting your materials, whether it's the felt or or some or whatever, that's almost a must-have. Kind of a paintbrush. I kind of use this for like applying solvent. I kind of like gently apply it to like some foam or whatever to kind of help dissolve it or dissolve the backing, so that I can kind of like dig dig it dig it out a little easier. Um, maybe. Tweezers kind of help sometimes to get stuff out. But as far as solvents are going, this is what I'm probably going to use. I'm not going to take it from where I have it. I'm going to use probably the Snapta, which is pretty good. It, it's not like, it shouldn't like react too badly with like that one, the uh, that plastic cam or whatever because you don't want something that's going to like dissolve any plastic or plastic parts or whatever but for most other like removing residue or whatever I think this will work pretty well either that or I'm going to use like white vinegar white vinegar is kind of good for like mild cleaning or whatever so so I in this case that's pretty much what I'm going to use as far as tools and supplies go uh, next scene I'm going to show you, I got these two cameras that I'm going to start on. Two, uh, the typical SLR here and this typical 
range finder and I'm going to tell you what I what you want to do uh, before you really start you want to like protect um, the viewfinders and, and the cavities or whatever because you don't want stuff to fall in or you know especially when you start working with whatever chemicals you're working with you don't want it to get on the any glass or plastic you know the viewfinders or, or whatever or inside the shutter uh, things like that so the next scene I'll I'll take these I'll show you these two cameras after they've been prepped and I'm ready to actually start uh, the cleaning process okay I want to show you a typical preparation of a, of a SLR and a rangefinder and what materials I'm I used and what materials I'm going to uh, use for my uh, cleaning process here for this uh, Pentax MV if I don't have a body cap and in this case I don't I take the lens off and I want to cover this up for for now and I that I do that and I do like the viewfinder window uh, for this for this rangefinder I tape off that and I also tape off the viewfinder all the all the plastic whatever and a recommendation I would say for for doing that I use this transparent tape and I and I use I specifically use the matte finish I don't want the the, the trans the other kind because the because the uh, the adhesive on that is just a little too gummy and it leaves like it has a way of leaving like residue where you don't want it it's hard to clean off I think this sticks just enough and when I say when you apply this uh, I have this closed I haven't put it on here yet but I am going to put like some over over this but I got to be really careful because I don't want that tape to stick to the actual shutter uh, curtain here but I'm going to like lightly put it on I don't have to press it down that hard because it's it'll just it'll stick I'll probably put it over the rails or whatever but like I said I, you, you never ever want to touch especially for like a metal bladed shutter like this you know you don't want to touch the tape to the actual shutter you want this above or whatever so I, I'll, I'll do that on this otherwise these other ones are pretty easy you know I just kinda put put the tape over over this cavity of, of inside there so so other than uh, sticking it on on this one the SLR one here I'm pretty much ready to start my cleaning process uh, but here like I said I want to show you some of the some of the things I haven't gone over yet this is like a nice kind of cement because you're going to be sticking this dis, dissimilar or dissimilar materials together and what is really nice about this I'm not really like I don't know if where you can get this I, I got this there's like a craft store right where I live where I found this but the nice thing about this one it has this really thin like needle point that I can like apply in easily inside those uh, channels or whatever for sticking it on. In fact, even maybe you can see, see how see how tiny that is. Now I have to look really close. I have to take this out of the cam or out of the the view of the camera here to put the cap back on. But I've used this; so it works really nice. It's it's really easy to apply the stuff you want where you want it. So. So that's pretty much where we're at now. All I have to do is like just put a little bit of my solvent or whatever. I'm going to put the naphtha in there. Like I said, I'll use maybe a brush. What I'm going to do first, I'll try digging digging out as much as I can with this, and then I'll just kind of wipe it on the paper towel and keep doing that back and forth. And uh, what I would say, you know. Like I said in my detailing video on cameras, you know, you don't want kids or pets around while you're doing this. You want to just, you know, there's no rush in doing this. You know, take as much time as you want. Um, depending on you're just working on one camera or if you have a collection like I do here. But, uh, you know, there's no, there's no time limit. I mean, through my experience, it, it might take you know, an hour or so, maybe longer, to really thoroughly clean out a camera. 
and it might take you know anywhere from a half hour to an hour to put the new material back in and depending on how neat you want to be um, but other than that you know I'm, like I said I'm ready to get started on these two cameras okay here's the ugly <laughs> side of, of doing this that's pretty much all the scrapings a lot of the scrapings some some fell on the newspaper here where I had the camera so it's like you want to be careful that that's why you you tape up so much of this you don't want that those pieces to get into the wrong thing but initially I've gotten maybe like 98 percent of all the stuff residue and, and stuff cleaned out of here cleaned out of these channels and as far as how thorough you have to be it depends on what kind of material you're going to put in in, in these little valleys here if you're going to put in the uh, the three gauge yarn you don't have to be like super perfect okay because some of that residue will actually help keep that yarn in place along with the the little cement I'm going to apply in here but I will give you a little disclaimer if you're going to use one of these one of these like pre-cut kits that have the super narrow uh, material the foam with the with the adhesive backing you have to be like really really thorough and clean that otherwise it's not going to stick in there thoroughly but since I'm using the yarn method and, and the felt method you know I, I in this case I, I don't have to be super thorough although it does it is going to take you a while to do it in any case no matter even if you do it like 90 percent now for this mirror bumper like I said half this material was gone and, and I, I I carefully scraped it and I added a little bit of solvent but when as a this might be like a no-brainer to say it but I'm gonna say it when you do try to get that out you want to always keep the, the camera inverted so that the stuff falls out rather than you don't want to get any in there especially if it has any kind of uh, liquid you know if, if you have used any like I used my little paintbrush and I just kind of a t applied a little bit and then scraped and, and, and I also use like a piece of tape and I pressed it to this to get more of that uh, material off of there so that's where we are there same thing with the back just opening it up off camera here pretty much the same thing here dug everything out of there same thing here well I shouldn't say same thing here I've decided to keep to trust this this felt to trust that is being still good okay rather than take that out any residue here I still have to remove wipe off a little bit then I'm going to be ready to apply my uh, my insulate or my uh, yeah I guess you call it insulating light insulating materials there so that's where we're at right now okay we're kind of halfway done with the seals here what I did is I, I used my little window insulating material and I made a mirror bumper for the the Pentax and I made an end seal for the Yashica here I didn't cut it I didn't do it perfect but I wanted I wanted wanted it to be the whole length there the way the original one was and to cover that entire width and I tested it a couple times when when you close it you want it to you want it to be maybe have a little bit of resistance but not if it's too thick you don't want like a lot of pressure on your hinge there when you close it of course then again I haven't added the the thread or the the yarn to the channels yet but I'm pretty confident that 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 is going to do the job uh, insulating wise light light seal wise there and I like I said I use that same material to do the mirror bumper on this one the Pentax same thing too I uh, I cut it a few times to make sure I got the right width inside there peel off the backing and then just kind of 
use my little uh, my little tool here, this little dental tool, to kind of press it in there nicely. Make sure it was a good fit in there, and I I know that that the uh, the thickness is good. I mean, it's not super critical, uh, but it looks nice and clean there. Same thing with now. I'm going to do like the thread. Like I said, I'm going to do the the number three gauge yarn there for the channels. I've had a change of plan to do too while I'm making this video. Instead of showing all those other cameras, which is going to take me quite a while to do, I'm just going to finish with these two cameras because these are pretty much representative of you know the work you'd have to do you know whether whether it's a rangefinder or a SLR 35 millimeter uh, film SLR there so I'll finish these two and then that'll probably be it for this video uh, because all those other cameras pretty much everything is going to be identical whether they're SLRs or the the kind of point and shoots or the rangefinder cameras there Okay, I'm pretty much done with the seals on both of these two cameras. Perhaps you can see see the thread there. And what I did is I, I took my cement, like I said, this has got like that little needle, almost like a hypodermic needle applicator there. And I made sure I got a flow going, but not too much to try to just get to the bottom of the, that's why that that cement is so good it has that I can go to the bottom of the of the groove there not the sides and then I would cut a piece a little longer and I would like maybe a little longer off at each end and then I would like sort of gauge where 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 the end of the groove was cut it and then I'd use my little pick here to like press it down along its length not too hard same thing with the top. Tops are more difficult because you got that little, that little tab thing, that resets your your film counter usually with almost all cameras. But I, that's what you do. You do that, and then you kind of close it up to try to. That helps kind of like um, press it down uniformly. And you know that you got a seal if it like closes and there's, there's no like play real play or anything once it's down you know that it, it's it's going to be a decent seal there right light seal same thing with the Yashica As you can see the same thing same idea I still got that little trigger there so all I have to do with these cameras really is do uh, do the little detailing or whatever and they sh I have every reason to believe that now these cameras are are good to, to uh, start shooting film with so so I hope you uh, got something out of this video and like I said I got I got a lot of work ahead of me and I'm not going to show those other cameras because I want to get this video up edited and up because I haven't made a video in quite a long time if, if you subscribe to this channel and I hope to do a lot of more uh, camera uh, reviews. I'm going to do those. I said I was going to do those years ago, but I, I've only recently uh, changed my situation here where I have time to even make videos, kind of videos that I really want to make. So so uh, once again, uh, thank you for uh, hanging in there with me, and uh, hope to see you back here uh, again sometime. Thanks, and bye for now.